Let's talk about Data Science Roadmap for 2025. I've been in the world of data science for well over half a decade now, and I started my journey as a big data engineer and currently I'm working as a senior data scientist. I've seen a huge transformation in the data science realm. There was a time when you could have become a data scientist with just Python and some machine learning algorithms, but in today's world, you need to know quite a lot. And in this video, we are not just going to talk about some of the technical skills, but we will also talk about some of the soft skills that you need to know. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So the first one is programming and it could take from one month to two months, depending on how comfortable you are with programming. So there are two major programming languages for data science. First one is Python and the next one is R. So depending on which one you prefer, you can go ahead with either of those. If I had to pick one, I would go with Python because it is the most popular programming language for data science. And when it comes to which all concepts you need to cover, you don't need to go into like absolute depth for Python. There are few concepts that you need to know, such as basic syntax Python, because if you know the syntax, you'll be able to easily write those complex logic. And then some of the other things like conditional and looping statements, Python data structures, such as list, dictionary, sets and tuples, and then file handling, because you will be handling quite a lot of files, trust me. And the next one is error handling. You will get quite a lot of errors, so you need to handle those as well. And the last one is package management because in Python, you won't be able to do anything without the help of packages. So you need to understand how to manage those packages and handle those packages. So that's all about Python concepts. Now, if you cover all these things, you'll be in a very good position to move on to the next topic or concept, which is going to be maths and stats. In maths and stats, again, you don't need to know how to solve those complex mathematical and statistical problems there are a few concepts that you need to know such as linear algebra calculus uh, descriptive statistics and in descriptive statistics you need to learn mean median mode standard deviation and uh, things like that then comes probability theory in probability theory you need to understand basic probability then conditional probability base theorem random variable and uh, various probability distributions after that cover inferential statistics that is also going to help you quite a lot because it covers things like uh, hypothesis testing, confidence interval. And these two are actually very, very important because whenever you do any kind of statistical analysis, you will be using these things quite a lot. So these two are very important. Apart from these two, you can also look into regression analysis and ANOVA. And to cover all these, on an average, it will take from one month to two months. Now, once you cover all these things, this is going to be a very good point where you can start learning about Git and GitHub because when you will work on a project in an organization you will not be working on that alone you'll be working in a team so it's important to know about git and github as well and you don't need to worry too much about all the hundred commands or maybe more that git has you just need to use like three or four commands like git init git add git commit git push pull request those kind of things if you know about those commands i think you will be good to go especially when you're working on your own projects when you go in a team you will learn few more but at least you will be very comfortable using these three four commands and it will make your life a lot more easier so it's very important to understand how these uh, version control work and you incorporate them in your workflow even if you are working alone it doesn't really matter because you can just push your code to github and that way you will also make a very good github profile you will have a lot more push to your github profile and you will have a lot more projects on your github so eventually if you want to build your portfolio you can use this, those projects from your github profile so yes definitely you need to start learning git uh, github and uh, for this you don't really need to dedicate additional time because while you are working on your project you can create a github account and uh, there you will get set off initial commands all you need to do is just take those commands run them one by one in your repository wherever your uh, project is stored and you'll be good to go so when you do it like a couple of times you will get used to so you don't need to additionally dedicate any time to github but if you really want to understand how git and github work um i think you'll have to dedicate some time to it but that would be something that you can do after you have gathered all these core skills and also at this point i think i would like to mention that uh, the way I have designed this roadmap, once you cover certain part of this roadmap, you will be able to apply for data analyst jobs and then in parallel you can learn other skills so that you will be ready for data science roles. I will let you know when we reach that point. So with that, let's move on to the next point, which is data manipulation. And for data manipulation, there are two major tools. One is SQL. The second one is Pandas. So I personally use them on daily basis. So whenever you want to query a database, when you want to do a very quick analysis, you can quite easily run your SQL query and you can take a look at the data. 
and uh, you'll have a good understanding how the data looks if you want to do it in your python environment pandas is the one which you will be using quite often but these days the data is growing so we'll talk about those skills as well as and when we move forward but i think to start with uh, pandas is a really good package that you should use for your data manipulation and this could take around one to two weeks shouldn't take that long you might say learning sql can take quite a lot of time and yes i totally agree if you want to learn everything about sql it will take quite a lot of time but to start with all you need to know is select and various clauses and uh, if you know about uh, insert create those kind of things you should be good to go so you don't need to worry too much about learning everything about sql if you are able to perform those various operations like selecting different columns and uh, where clause group by order by those kind of things i think you will be good so now with that let's move on to the next point which is data analysis and data visualization so for this i think there are few very popular packages in python first one is the matplotlib which you will be using quite a lot and then if you want to beautify things a little bit then you can use seaborn if you want to make some interactive uh, plots and charts then you can use plotly so i think those are the three major python uh, libraries which you will be using for your data visualization data analysis but i would also suggest that you should learn some other data visualization tools such as power bi or tableau because they are very powerful when it comes to creating dashboards and uh, they are very popular reporting tools and when you will be in an organization and when you want to interact with your uh, stakeholders non-technical stakeholders they may ask you for dashboards and stuff and i think they will always ask for these kind of dashboards and when you write code in your python notebook and if you just want to give that uh, analysis to them just once maybe then it's fine you can provide them analysis in ppt or other kind of things but when it comes to those regular data analysis that they want to do play with some filters and stuff that's when these reporting tools become a lot more powerful and you can create a lot of very beautiful visuals using just some drag and drop uh, icons so you can pick either power bi or tableau if i had to pick one i would go with power bi because it's very user friendly and a lot of these organizations use power bi quite extensively and to learn these tools it can take around one month to two months again because power bi alone can take one month simply because you can well you can create those very uh, simple visualizations using drag and drop feature but there's a lot more to it you can create whole data model you can do quite a lot of data transformation within it so it can take quite a long time but if you are on a time crunch you can cover all of these things in one to oh, sorry two to three weeks because you can dedicate your first week to all those python libraries and you can dedicate your second week for power bi and uh, you should be able to pick up quite a lot of things because while there is a huge learning curve when it comes to dax but then you will only be using dax uh, for complex measures and stuff but if you are creating just some visuals you will be good to go without any dax query because when i started learning power bi i didn't use dax at all for a very long time but when i started to get into some complex visualizations and some complex logic and i had to do those calculations within power bi that's when i started looking into dax and uh, making use of those so yes, it can take from, let's say, two weeks to two months, depending on how much you want to cover. With that being said, let's move on to the next one, which is big data. We all know how fast the data is growing and uh, to be able to handle those things, these big data skills are very essential. So the first one is going to be Spark or PySpark. So it's very popular. A lot of these companies, they use PySpark. It's open source. They can run it quite easily. But then it's also very interesting is because there are some platforms like Snowflake and Databricks. They support PySpark. On top of that, Snowflake has come up with this Snowpark. And uh, Snowpark uses very similar kind of syntax that you use in your PySpark code. So once you learn PySpark, you can just write your code in any of these systems and you don't need to learn something new. So I think I would suggest PySpark is going to be your go-to tool to learn. And then you can maybe specialize into one of these tools. You can pick either Snowflake, you can pick Databricks, whichever you like, I'm using Snowflake quite a lot these days and I think I'm liking it. So yeah, that is going to be my recommendation and it can take around two to three weeks to pick up these things. Once you cover all these concepts that we talked about so far, you will be in a very good position to work on some real world projects related to data analysis. And once you have worked on those projects, you can create a nice profile, you can have a very good resume. And it is going to be a very good point where you can start applying for data analysis rules if you are interested in that. And parallelly, you can learn some of the things that we will talk about 
next which is machine learning so machine learning has supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so if you're someone who doesn't know anything about machine learning i would say start with supervised learning and cover up until unsupervised learning and you can keep reinforcement learning for some other time unless you are really interested in uh, reinforcement learning and to cover all of these things it may take around two to three months depending on how fast you are able to pick things up because there are quite a lot of algorithms that you would have to learn and i would suggest go a little bit more on the mathematical side when you are learning about all these algorithms and i would also suggest one other important thing whenever you are working on some machine learning algorithm or a machine learning project just to learn stuff i would say make use of some of these cloud platforms that we have so for example aws SageMaker azure ml or gcp when i was learning i registered on gcp and i got some credit and i used those credit to make use of those cloud platform because what will happen is once you do these uh, projects in those cloud platform you will get used to how to make use of them while the ui is going to be different for these three the way they work is going to be very much same so even if you learn something on gcp and eventually have to move on to let's say aws or azure ml it won't be that big of a stretch you will be able to do it quite easily so i would suggest it is good it is good to make use of these platform because you will also get some experience of uh, making use of these cloud platform now what all concepts you should learn and which all algorithms you should pick so first let's talk about some of the supervised algorithms you can start with linear regression which is the most easiest one to understand and then you can start looking into some of the other algorithms like logistic regression decision tree random forest support vector machine k nearest neighbor xg boost cat boost there are quite a lot of algorithms but i think these are the ones which are most popular and quite widely used when it comes to supervised learning now let's look at some of the unsupervised algorithms you can start with k-mean then you can move on to db scan then hierarchical clustering pca those kind of things and to implement all these algorithms you can use sklearn or scikit-learn package it has implementation of all these algorithms so that you don't have to implement them from scratch so make sure you familiarize yourself with this package and get used to using it in your data science projects once you have covered all those things under machine learning i think it will be a good time to move on to the next one which is deep learning deep learning can also take two to three months or maybe even more because it's a little bit more complex when compared to traditional machine learning under deep learning there are three major sections first one is ann or artificial neural network second one is cnn or convolutional neural network the third one is rnn or recurrent neural network so you need to go through these concepts to understand how the deep learning algorithms work in different domains so when it comes to ann you need to cover perceptron multi-layer perceptrons activation functions such as sigmoid relu 10h etc and uh, then you also need to understand how backpropagation works because backpropagation is the fundamental or the backbone of the whole of deep learning so it's also very important to understand how backpropagation exactly works once you have covered these points you will be in a good position to move on to cnn or convolutional neural network so it is mostly used for computer vision tasks anything to do with photos and videos but not limited to uh, computer vision when learning about cnn it's important to understand how convolutional layer works and then how polling layer works so those are some of the very key concepts that you need to learn under cnn after that you can move on to rnn which is recurrent neural network it is it is designed mainly for natural language processing or uh, textual data under rnn you should cover lstm or long short term memory and uh, get it recurrent units these are also known as sequence to sequence and to implement all these concepts you could either use tensorflow or pytorch if i had to pick one i would go with pytorch because it has been gaining quite a lot of popularity in recent time once you cover all these concepts under deep learning you'll be in a very good position to move on to the next big thing which is generative ai and uh, as you might already know generative ai is the very hot topic of today's data science realm so if you want to get into generative ai i would suggest it's important you specialize into one or the other and when i say one or the other there are mainly two uh, domains one is computer vision and the other one is natural language processing so when you want to get into computer vision you will have to learn certain set of stuff and then when you want to get into natural language processing side of things you will have to learn different set of stuff but before you make your decision as to which one to pick computer vision or natural language processing i would suggest learning these three concepts which are gan or generative adversarial networks also understand about attention mechanism and then understand about transformers architecture once you have understood these things 
I think you should pick one computer vision or natural language processing. So if you decide to go for computer vision, you need to understand variational autoencoder and uh, diffusion model. Variational autoencoder learns a compressed representation of the data and uses it to generate new samples. Whereas diffusion model starts with random noise and gradually refines it to generate images. And when you will be learning about these two concepts, you will also come across quite a lot of other terminologies as well, such as stable diffusion or VQ, variational autoencoder, autoencoders, those kind of things. So you should look into those concepts as well. But if you choose to go for natural language processing, you need to cover prompt engineering, calling various APIs like uh, ChatGPT API. And then you need to understand uh, how RAG or retrieval augmented generation works. You need to understand how to fine tune a large language model. If you want to get into some really advanced fine tuning concepts, then you need to understand how QLORA fine tuning works. And then today's very hot topic, which is agentic AI or agentic LLM. So you need to get into those concepts as well. And to specialize into one or the other, it can take around one to two months. So those were all the technical skills. But if you want to be a data scientist, you cannot get away with just technical skills. You need to have some soft skills as well. And when it comes to soft skills, it's very important to have a very good communication skills because you will be explaining your thought process. You'll be explaining your analysis. You will be explaining your findings to a lot of your non-technical stakeholders. So you need to understand how to dumb down those things and make them understand what those analysis mean and uh, how they can make use of it. So communication is going to be very important here. The next one is presentation skills. But now the question is, how do you improve your communication and presentation skills? I would suggest try to explain the things that you learn to your family members, to your friends. And uh, if they are able to understand those things and if they don't get bored, when you explain those things to them, I think you're good. And over time, you will learn how to explain them these technical stuff easily. And then you also need to have very good ethical understanding because you will be dealing with quite a lot of data and uh, you need to make sure that you are ethically dealing with that data because you might come across some sensitive data as well. And the last one is domain expertise. To get domain expertise, you need to work on different projects. So if you already have interest in certain domains, for example, healthcare or finance or insurance, those kind of things, you can pick data sets from those domains and try to solve some use case. And also, it's not just about understanding the domain. It's also about asking those hard questions, such as why do you need the solution? How do you need the solution? How will you use the solution? Because if you are able to understand these things, you will be able to design your system in a much better way. And uh, the end user will be a lot more happy using those uh, tools or the solution that you will build. Now we have reached a point where you can start working on some of the projects because you have learned all the concepts and I'm sure you would have worked on some of the projects by now already because by learning some of those uh, concepts, you will be working on some of the projects. But I think this is going to be a point where you can put everything in one or two or three projects and uh, work on end to end data science project. So if you want to do that, and if you want to gain some experience without having a job, there are a few things that you can do. The first one is Kaggle competitions. So there are quite a lot of Kaggle competitions and they run quite regularly. You can check them out on Kaggle. So participate in Kaggle competitions. You can also contribute to open source projects. And once you do those kind of things and if you're able to do those things successfully, you will be able to apply for jobs. And not saying that after doing all those things, you should apply for a job. You can start applying for a job at a point where you feel like yes you have learned quite a lot of things and you feel confident you should start applying for job but if you have covered everything so far you will be in a very good position to apply for jobs and then uh, the last thing is keep building your profile and work on some real world projects so if you want to get some ideas which real world projects to work on i think this video is going to help you check out this video to learn more about real world projects